This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. The federal health insurance marketplace is now open. So if you're under 65, you're free to shop for the health plan that's right for you. UPMC Health Plan has some of the lowest price plans on the marketplace. Plus, you may be eligible for financial assistance to help you pay for your insurance. For affordable coverage that includes access to UPMC and digital tools to help you manage your health, visit upmchealthplan.com slash marketplace. Enroll today. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast 469 intro take two. We hit record this time. I'm Mike Sorgat, at Sorgatron on the Twitter at Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, where it was election day 2019. And I got a sticker that is my awesome thing of the week. I'm just going to jump right into it because they have not had stickers in like the 15 years that I've been here uh, in this neighborhood. <laughs> so I'm very excited for my My Voted sticker. Uh, sorry, audio listeners. Uh, but, anyways. Uh, we have the crew in with us. Back in the studio is the gadget guru over at Big Bank International. It is John Chichilla. I did not get a sticker today, but I bet you if I dig through enough of boxes at home, I bet you I still have some Get Glue stickers laying around. Get Glue. I did definitely have Get Glue <clears throat> stickers around. Like I found like a sheet of them. I'm like, oh, I didn't use these House MD stickers. <laughs> I didn't use these uh, Thor Dark World stickers. What's up with that? I, uh, I, I still miss Get Glue. Get Glue. It was an app, and you check what well, you checked in on shows that you watched. You know, before we did on Facebook, and they would send you stickers eventually of shows that you checked yeah, in. I think on. it was like, what would it have been like, twenty five shows or something like that? But they had different. You could you could also get like different stickers for the yeah, same for show. special events and things like that too, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that was that's awesome. I had an Attack of the Show sticker. Attack of the Show sticker. Nice. Um, Also, Brian Crawford with us with pghmuseums.org. Yeah, and I didn't get a sticker either, and I was really, really upset about it. But you can cheer. You can brighten my day and raise my spirits by voting for pghmuseums.org by going to our website. There you go. And clicking buy a ticket to our launch party. Vote for pghmuseums.org. And that'll that'll cheer me up for my my lack of stickers. Fantastic. Are there stickers at the party? There won't be no. Oh, <laughs> no stickers. No stickers. But you'll get two. You'll get two drinks. Oh, he's got a lot going ticket. on. You're gonna get. Yeah, a... You'll get a free fossil to take home. That's better than a sticker. Yeah. Can I trade in my fossil for a sticker? Yeah. Well, yeah, get, on, get, yeah. On the on the can you trade on, a, yeah on the, on the Pittsburgh night market exactly. Yeah. You got to be the first sixty people to buy a ticket. So if you're there, you you're go there. There you go. Uh, joining us, we'll talk more about PGH museums, of course, and there's a lot of techie to get into here. But of course, this is the Awesome Cast. Please check out everything at awesomecast.com, where you can check out this. And past episodes, our awesome chats are up there as well. A lot of great conversations we've had over the years since 2010 when we got the ball rolling with this show. Ooh, coming up on our 10th anniversary. We need to do something about that next That's year. That's wild. Hmm. Uh, but uh, g- go check that out. Subscribe to the show on your podcast formats. And of course, video versions on Facebook and YouTube. You can hit us up, email at awesomecast at circuitronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Like I said, follow us on the Facebook page. And we have a wonderful Awesome Cast Facebook group. A lot of great conversation. We have a few stories in the rundown uh, that you guys in the group actually had submitted. So uh, we'll have those online as well. Uh, also, of course, please ask your... We're in the future now. Ask your voice thing to uh, play the Awesome Cast, your Google Home, your Amazon Echo, your uh, uh, Apple HomePod, uh, all connected to the podcast universe. And of course, we're here every Tuesday every, uh, on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Several other formats as well that we do go out to. But of course, the Facebook Live is where we are paying attention to the conversation in the chat chat room and we can say hi to you guys out there uh like uh brandon out in the kansas city like dave ponder tiny shirt podcast i see a bunch of people jumping in here tonight so what's up everybody what's up you jag off i see you out there in the chat room too uh the great you jag off podcast uh so 
And also, wait, where are we at in the rundown? Hello, if you're catching us later or one of the other outlets, please, uh, if you have some comments, you want to tell us how we're wrong about Star Trek, well, you have to get on the Patreon for that. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) If you just want to tell us uh, any of that stuff, tweet us at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC469. And also, thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the 405media.com that are carrying us five days a week over there. And our friends at Post Industrial Audio, they're helping us out. And uh, you guys heard an ad uh, before the show if you're on any of the feeds afterwards. Thank you them for helping us out with that and help expand the awesome cast universe. Thank you to our Patreon supporters over at <laughs> patreon.com slash awesome cast so we can get chill with some cough medicine. Uh, <laughs> Coffee Club $5 level. You guys are going to get a very heated Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek versus Star Wars <laughs> conversation that Brian uh, Chilla and myself had that will be uh, exclusive to you guys. We didn't stream it or anything. It's it's, it's captured, and that's going to be up there. Uh, you guys are going to get that here later this week. But thank you, everybody, at the $5 Coffee Club level. Our friends Matt Muller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen. And at the Fan the Show dollar level, the, the longest-running Patreon supporter, Dutter's favorite Fedor, Michael Fedor, and, of course, new... No! We need a bell or something. Uh, <laughs> Brian with pghmuseums.org yeah. is now a part of the... the you, you put your money where your mouth is with the show, right? <laughs> you, you, you voted. I voted, You yes. voted for the awesome cast. I did. I voted for it. I'm here. Right? You're, you're, he, he's here. He put in for it. And uh, I really Got some appreciate gadgets that. with me. Got some gadgets with him. And we'll get into those here. So it is time for the awesome thing of the week uh like let's let's oh, wait 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 we got it we got an incoming going on here oh no i do have a button that was easy <laughs> <laughs> we do have a big red button welcome to the show that was easy. all right brian crawford as a new patreon supporter you go first in the awesome thing of the week and i know you have props over there you want me to go with the gadget then uh yes we'll go, with, go the with the gadget let's go with the gadget okay, so I got this really great wireless uh, microphone set, and I was looking for something that I could use on the road to do interviews and things like that, and I wanted something that I didn't have to be tied down to a plug, because mm-hmm. with uh, the new project pghmuseums.org, everything we do is, is on location for the most part. So I needed something. So I got this device. It's, um, it's a wireless headset. Uh, here's the box here. It's, uh, it's called Hotec is the name of the brand. And what's great about it is there's one receiver for two microphones. This receiver just plugs right into a quarter inch slot, and I just put it, plug it right into my Zoom recorder. So again, I'm completely mobile. The Zoom recorder is battery run. These are all wireless battery run, like like rechargeable battery run. So which is nice, and it comes with two little receivers. They're nice and small, very sleek looking as well. They clip right onto your belt. And you plug in a microphone right at the top, and they give you two options for each one of the receivers as to what type of microphone you're going to use. One of them is a simple lapel mic. And what's nice is when you plug it in, you can actually twist it on to make sure that it's secure and it's not going to pop out if someone moves their arm or something like that. The other option is one that goes over the head. And you can use that, say, like if you're like, I don't know, like I was interviewing uh, Jaime Guerrero from the Pittsburgh Glass Center. And I was behind the camera, so I'm using my hands for camera work. So I was able to just put that right around my head, and it made it a lot easier, whereas he wore the lapel mic because he was on camera. So it's really, really nice. It works really well. It sounds pretty decent. If you've listened to any of the the two videos that we put out, whether it be the Ton Pottery video at PGH Museums on our Facebook page, or whether it be the one from uh, Jaime you'll notice that that those the audio is not too bad and it came from these these rec- these uh, microphones so i'm really happy with it 80 bucks i think is what this cost me and for for two microphones to to go to one receiver that's a pretty good deal what was the brand again bucks. it's called hotec it's h o t e c okay and yeah it says a uh, head wireless headset and lav uh, lavalier microphone but there's four there's two head two microphone options for each one of the headsets mm mm-hmm. mhm that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm hey. really happy with it. Now you, you did say that you, you can get a little bit of like a, a, a fuzz to it, and if you're in editing, like a lot of, a lot of times you can fix that. And, and, and generally in hardware, you'll get something like that. Exactly. Um, so, but other than that, like I mean, for eighty dollars, like that's that that looks like you know, as long as you get a, a nice enough source close to the person, 
that you get the best quality. There's a reason we're all like right up on our mics if you're watching us on yeah. video, right? Because that's you know it's going to be the cleanest thing. Don't get as much of the air around us or anything like that. I can I can adjust to that and make it more more you know a little less sensitive to things, uh, so you get just the important audio, right? So yeah, um, and with the lavier mic, you're not going to get as good of audio as as like you're talking about with the microphone right here. But when you're recording like a documentary, you know it kind of looks awkward if someone's holding a microphone yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you want to hide that. Uh, and and if you're it's just you, you're like I can't do a boom mic. You know, trust me, I did a three camera shoot with a boom mic mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago for the first time. I'm like, wow, let's not do that often. Yeah, uh, that's the reason why that's usually a person's job. Mm -hmm. uh, but so so uh, what was the connection? So you're plugging it into the Zoom, right? Yep. And what, what what is that connection that, that, that hooks into there? Because I know it takes it's, several. It's just a quarter inch. So the Zoom okay. can go XLR or uh, quarter inch. And okay. this one's yeah, just yeah. a quarter inch. You just plug it in right in the back. And if you just set your Zoom up to mono, it'll go to, to both ears. And I suppose if you had an adapter, you could use that on something with a headphone jack. Like if you had an adapter for an iPhone. They actually come with that. That's oh, a, really? That's a nice thing. Yeah, it does. It comes right with the headphone jack. So you just plug okay. this right okay. in. And so, that goes right into your headphone so, jack. So you, if you have a phone with uh, headphone jack capabilities, it could very well or a be dongle. used for that. Or a dongle. Yeah. <laughs> we literally had somebody that couldn't be on the show because they lost. They didn't. They couldn't find their dongle tonight. So <laughs> we won't. We won't disclose the person with the dongle problem <laughs> this evening. We we won't dongle shame you. Okay. No dongle. No. Shaming. No dongle shaming on this show. But if 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 that person had their dongle, they would be able to plug this right into it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that that's good. That's, that's that's a nice like you know for eighty bucks. For eighty bucks, you can't kill. You can't beat that. No, no, no. And it sounds like the quality is pretty decent. I mean, just just the lavalier like microphones I get are a pair for a hundred, like the MXL ones. Yeah. Um, well, again, and I eventually yeah. I would like to get better quality, but you know, I, yeah, I had yeah. to buy a camera too that was pretty pricey. Yeah, you got like, like a four K Sony camera or something, yeah. right? So Pan yeah, it's Panasonic, yeah. but yeah, it's Panasonic. Same. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. So yeah, and that's and I wonder if that is because if you have that and and some of those cameras like in that uh, say eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollar range like they don't have inputs maybe they have a microphone like a headphone jack microphone input and I wonder if that would be compatible with that then with oh that adapter, it, it, so. I think it would be yeah so but you know what I would prefer to do though is I I would still prefer to run it through the zoom because I can actually yes. I can hook the zoom up on top of the camera and then right. run everything through right. that way I can get a second record on Absolutely. it as well and we're talking about like the zoom like yeah uh, i think you have an h6n is that yeah. right and the h4n I, mean, we I have the h4n That's uh, right. we have h4n here right in front of me in the studio i don't want to pick it up because i don't want to mess up the recording this is like our backup recording to the video well what's great so. about it too is the camera actually the camera itself has zoom technology in its microphone so it doesn't oh, have a bad microphone nice, nice. on it either and i mean that was a lower end it was around a thousand dollars for that camera so it is 4k but it's not you know, Sorgatron Media Studio 4K, <laughs> but but still, if you look at the videos, it's a good quality, and I think it suits our needs. Um, awesome. So check it out. That's the Hotec. We'll have the link in the show notes, of course. Uh, the Hotec wireless uh, uh, headset lavalier microphone. So for you guys looking to do interviews out there. Well, the big news this week, my awesome thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with it a little bit, doing graphics and stuff probably this week. I think we have everything hooked up. There it goes. Photoshop Arise on the iPad. This isn't like Photoshop Express or anything. It, it's being labeled, and it's a little bit of a misnomer, uh, I think, where, where we say, oh, it's full Photoshop. It is not. I mean, it, it is not entirely full, full Photoshop. I'm going to pull up. This is one of the uh, Photoshop files, and I threw it in the... I threw it in the uh, the 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 Apple Cloud or I'm sorry the uh, Creative Cloud and threw it in here and this is one of the sh the show graphics like we do for this show this is one for Wrestling Mayhem show and, and it's pretty intuitive you got your basic tools on the on the left I uh, uh, you know I haven't played much with like Magic Wand or anything like that uh, it does work with the <sighs> Apple Pencil we don't have one uh, but you know it's very worth touch getting. What's that? The Apple Pencil? Yes. Yeah, but we were also not like drawing things with things or, or anything like Worth that. Worth getting. But, uh, but you know, it, it, it's pretty nice and, and you know, with the multi-touch. Because they, they changed something with a, a Photoshop. And, like, my, my positioning is all weird when I went to do graphics last week. So you can get in here, and uh, it looks like we have a lot of the blending options and stuff in here. I, I'm sure this is more aimed at still, like, I'm editing photos, probably. Um but but still like that's a lot of capabilities and for me as i've already discussed in the past like i was talking to you brian beforehand i'm looking for more and more options that i can just bring my ipad to do more stuff and that opens up hey we need to do this quick graphic for uh, uh, you know fix 
fix a a fix a poster for a show, mm-hmm. right? Hey, somebody misspelled McKeesport or something, right? And we want to fix that. Uh, you know, that's never happened. I mean, who misspells McKeesport? But anyways, um, you know, but the, you can do stuff like that. You can, it, you know, if you have something like we have this format for the for the graphics, I go like, okay, just pull this in off the cloud, put the new graphic in, boom, 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 put the podcast up. Like you can create a workflow with this that that if you're on the road i don't have to bring the expensive macbook with me yeah i'm bringing the also expensive ipad but still it's like easier it's less to bring you well, know i'm glad that they're working with um, a mouse because that's my thing no matter what they do yeah i will yeah. never be able to use an ipad and i'm not sure how this works with the mouse i haven't used the mouse on yeah. an ipad or anything but of course it is there under the accessibility yeah because that that's something that that really i think is uh, to me I, I don't know how they were able to claim to have a professional tablet without mouse compatibility right right but i know just like me myself like i can't edit i know there's video editing options on here in audio editing on the ipad that i can't do it without a mouse Mm -hmm. i just one of those people i'm i just my mind it's it's i don't know if it's a mind thing your mind thinks differently using the mouse or it's kind of like when you write handwrite something you remember it better than if you just you know hear it i don't know if it's that type of a thing where my mind just doesn't work the right way but without a mouse i just can't I get yeah. that. Yeah, I can get how people can get hung up with that. Um, now, the next thing for me is give me Final Cut. Mm-hmm. Give me Final Cut capabilities on the iPad. You know, I'm not going to edit a three hour wrestling show with a three camera edit, I'm sure. But like something like, uh, for instance, one of my clients, we did a five day shoot. The sixth day was a live streamed event, uh, award ceremony. And I had to have a highlight reel mm-hmm. for that event. Of the previous five days, found out that the people before me had a team of two or three people doing it, and it was just me. Oh, wow. So it was a lot of nights in the hotel room pulling things together, doing a little bit of the day, a little bit of the day, last day, clean everything up, right? Uh, so thankfully, it was a very slow-moving auto-drive competition. <laughs> so really, there wasn't a ton like there would be some of the other ones. But still, like to be like, hey, I can bring that in, pull out my iPad, uh, I'm trying to figure out throwing SD cards in, and that doesn't work with formats. Um, we we're talking about MTS files beforehand and mm-hmm. my issues with Final Cut. Um, but so so, but it's getting there, right? Like we can do that. We can throw photos in. We can throw a GoPro card in, it, and I can I can shoot with the GoPro. Throw it. In, I believe if I know if I understand the formats right, uh, I should be able to throw that card into the adapter I got. Um, which I have another funny story about the adapter I got too that I need to get to at some point. Um, and and pull that in and work on it. Like that's awesome. That's awesome. And and you know creates a, a, a more possibilities I feel for workflow. Oh, especially I, when you're on the road. I agree. I'm excited about it. The other day I had a little video that I had recorded uh, just on my cell phone, and it was about this like this little church. It was a church, maybe maybe the height of this couch, and it was a model of a church. And they, it was so detailed. The the altar was there with even the cross in the middle and all the pews inside of it. It was great. And it was like I had to pull out the go out into my desktop and edit it. And it was if I could just do that on the iPad with a professional product, that would be great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all of this stuff integrating with the iPad is wonderful. Um, they're not they're not ending with Photoshop. They also announced all the the if you I'm not a designer enough to be using all this, but these features, but the font packages with Creative Cloud are now also available nice. on, on iOS devices through Creative Cloud apps. Um, also, they did preview the Illustrator app for um ipad and that's going to be a big deal get, getting into illustrator with the pencil and everything right? they also previewed some kind of ar development where it looked like you could do it right on the ipad and really kind of build your own ar what work. on the ipad yeah okay <clears> that, that looks super into. cool like they had a very like have you ever seen those animations where it's like a bunch of animated balls that kind of flow together and flow mm-hmm. around and whatnot like in, in kind of like a I thought you DNA know what I, helix like it was like kind of like that where you were going to be able to build these AR things, mm-hmm. but right it looked like it was right on the iPad. Oh wow, so it looked really cool. I, I mean, I'm always interested. Like, I don't need to, but I'm interested in like what can we boil down to that, right? Wait, can we get to the point where I don't need to drop three grand on my next laptop to be able to do the workflow that I need to do? Mm-hmm. You know, like that's the big thing. Uh, for me, I mean, and, and you just need there. the next iPad, like Super Pro. Yeah, it'll be a fifteen hundred dollar iPad by yeah. the time we get to it, probably. But well, that know. is exciting because that's a good point. Because I tried mm. to edit that video on my 
my computer, yeah, my exactly. laptop, then yeah. it wouldn't yeah. work. It said the resolution got, you, wasn't good enough. Yeah, you kind of have a, a, what is that, like maybe a 13-inch Dell? That yeah, you have there? Mm-hmm. So. it's an Inspiron. It's got like, it flips around. It's a newer computer. It's not that old, but it just yeah, doesn't yeah. have the specs. Well, yeah, it's, pr- it's not built for that. It's probably built yeah. for, you know, someone that's typing, drawing, maybe, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but so, for something like that. So, it's interesting. It's interesting to see what's, what's going on with that. Yeah, we have that problem. We have, we have some people, a few people we work with where like, I want to edit video, but the laptop I have because it's what I can afford and I'm not a video professional, but I'm trying to get there. Like getting over that hump is very hard right now. It seems Mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, general people, I think that to get into that and have the hardware. So, um, if we know our hardware seems to get old quicker and quicker when when we're, when we're with this kind of work and we're not, we're hardly getting into 4k stuff yet because it's just, the need hasn't been there for our client base. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, Chilla, I almost, I almost started talking about pizza. Chilla, what is your awesome thing? Pizza, it's still my turn. You know what's awesome? Pizza <laughs> is awesome, but also Chilla has an awesome thing that is probably not editable. It, it is definitely not editable. So Microsoft Ignite is this week, and one of the things that they announced was a rewrite to the mobile apps. Mm. So they're coming out with a new Office app for mobile. Okay. So if you're familiar with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint and how you can get them on mobile, Mm -hmm. um, this is an all-in-one version of that where Word, Excel, and PowerPoint will all be in one application. I'd urge you, if you can, to play the video. I am. Um, And in that video, what it actually shows is like, they're adding a bunch of extra feature functionality of what they find useful out of the mobile app. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to do things like sign PDFs. You'll be able to take a picture of a table, like on a, like any kind of chart or whatnot and automatically import that table into Excel. Anything that makes PDFs easier because that's, that's the thing that seems to always get hung up with us. You'll be able to scan documents with the camera and add it, add the text right into word. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a, an interesting concept. Also, it prevents you from having to constantly flip back and forth between apps. If, if you're using all three, right, you're just in the single application. Hopefully they can execute this as well as it looks in the video. Cause it looks mm-hmm. pretty darn cool. And then obviously you can share any of those docs with OneDrive and whatnot. Um, the, the preview is available on Google play. Um, from for the office preview for android and if you're an ios user they have a test flight link i was not able to sign up um oh wow it gave me an entire um i was not able to sign up because all of the um, test flights were in use but uh, maybe it'll maybe it'll come to bear i don't know this is interesting because it looks like there may even be an Apple TV version of this. Huh. An Apple TV version of, of Office? Wouldn't that be interesting, though? Think about well, it. I guess it would be throw your slides up on the Apple TV, right? Is that what we're talking about? Or yeah. or could I bring Word onto my... Huh. Yeah, this is TVOS app. Apple TV with TVOS 9 or later. Oh. I don't know. We'll see because this is also a Thai site. Well, we'll see how that goes. I definitely like that idea, though. I like mm-hmm. that concept of them working together. Well, we've we played with that idea before. I feel like it was something else where it's like, what if I could just like pull up my keyboard and Office goes up on Apple? TV? We thought about that with the uh, Xbox. In the I past, thought about right? that, yeah, with the Xbox. Yeah, why, why would they just bring it over? Yeah, there? why isn't Office just pull up on there? I can, I can, I, I can already sync a keyboard to my Xbox um, because with the Internet Explorer and other applications on there, right? Um, or if you just want to game that way. Uh, with a mouse and keyboard. So why not just be like, hey, and you can load a document and start working on it. You have a computer. Honestly, some people wouldn't need a computer at that point because a lot of people, that's all they need is to be able to type yeah. a few documents and yeah. send it out. I got my Xbox at my desk <laughs> where I play my video games because mm-hmm. I got a comfy chair and stuff. But also I want to do my homework. Yeah. And then that's all you need. I mean, they're already doing deals with college students for Xbox that helps the install base. You know, if that's like I have my laptop to do this, and then this is my sit down at the desk version. Yeah, that'd be a great thing. That so makes sense. You deploy them as educational devices, and you know, there you go. All right. Well, hey, you know what is awesome? As I teased here a moment ago, our friends at Slice on Broadway. 
supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for uh, many of those near 10 years we've been uh, doing the awesome cast. Right up the street here in the Beachview neighborhood, the wonderful fall day in Beachview. I love driving up the uh, driving up the, the tracks and uh, uh, along the streetcars and, uh, and, and, and picking up our pizza and talking wrestling with our friends up there. Uh, here in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Who are in hibernation for the winter? Uh, <laughs> so I think they, they, I think they went to, they, they went into hibernation early. I, I think as usual. So go check out our friends sites on Broadway dot com and uh, yeah, go check them out. Please let them know that the awesome cast sent you. Tweets are appreciated as well. Uh, so thanks uh, to those guys. Uh, so let's get into the local focus. Hey, what is more local than what Brian Crawford is doing <laughs> right now? Uh, he has a wonderful project that is kicking off. We mentioned the 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 party coming up here, pghmuseums.org. And uh, uh, Brian, so so what the heck is this thing? It's a lot of things. It's really a three part project. It's a directory, it's a media site, and it's membership. Mm-hmm. Uh, the directory I'm really excited about because this doesn't exist. Uh, I was doing a podcast before called the Culture Cruise where we went to small museums. We were trying to shed some light on them and get them some interest. And people would always ask me, where can I find a list of museums? And I was always like, ooh, I don't know. doesn't exist. So I thought, why don't we create that list? You got asked that enough times, right? I did, actually. Believe it or not, a lot of people want to know. People want this information because all they hear about are the same museums. Or There's also a top 10 list that goes around and then everybody steals and plagiarizes that top 10 list and releases it as their own to try to get clickbait. (laughs) But nobody actually has a comprehensive list. So we created it and we have a listing of over more than 400 museums, galleries, and historic places across southwestern Pennsylvania. And it's a really, 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 really great, easy to use site. We hired this company. I think they're called Sidekick Media Services. What? Yeah. I should have placed this with a different ad. <laughs> <laughs> Sidekick Media Services. You know, I wanted to go with the, the best people in the business. So I decided to work with Sidekick, which is obviously affiliated with, with you guys mm-hmm. here at Sorgatron mm-hmm. Media. And what's great about the directory and the website is everything's searchable. So you could just search Allegheny County and everything in Allegheny will, County will come up. You can search house, you know, you can search like a house tour and, and anything that says house tour on it will come up. You can search Carnegie and everything related to anything Carnegie, whether it be a Carnegie Library or a Carnegie Museum, it'll come up in the search engine. Also with that directory, it has a map, and that it's really exciting. We have this interactive map with all of the, the listings on this map, and you can navigate to them, and it'll, it'll show you the museums that are right around your location, the actual physical address, everything right there. So that's the directory element. The other part is the blog. If you show the homepage there, you'll see that there's uh, a lot of different blog posts. Most of them are press releases. So we're going to be having all sorts of media right there. Everything that we post will go to that blog. So I think, I don't don't know if I know how to get to the home. We're in a preview mode right now. Go to pghmuseums.org. We're we're giving you guys a a sneak preview. It's a sneak preview. We we got the the backdoor access here. Uh, So So uh, pghmuseums.org slash home. That's how you can get to the preview. And on there on the main page, you'll see uh, the blog going down the middle. Now, everything will go to the blog, whether it's a press release, whether it's an event, whether it's an original blog piece, because we're going to have our own original content as well. We'll also have artist interviews, which will come out every other week. And we'll also be doing mini documentaries that take you behind the scenes of a lot of these places. But everything will populate to that main blog site right there so that's the media element to it the third part is membership and those documentaries those videos will actually be behind the paywall for members only for the most part and the documentaries they're like i said they're going to be behind the scenes and things like that but your membership will include more than just that content that content will come out every once in a blue moon what's really the core of the membership is you'll get an actual membership card and that membership card will get you discounts at museums all across the region uh, some are, some will give you discounts to admissions. Some will give you discounts to services. I know Panza Gallery is giving a, a discount on framing, for example. Uh, Gallery Chiz is giving you a discount on certain t- types of paintings. So you get a lot for just $20, which is what the card costs. And, uh, and it gets you, you're a member of all of these different museums through it. 
which is really cool. So it's a really innovative and, and new modern way to look at finding these museums. I think one of the biggest problems that museums have is there's no outlet, there's no modern day yellow book to find them because yeah. people our yeah. age, they're not going to the yellow book. They're looking online. And uh, I was in Tampa recently and half of the businesses were not on Google and I couldn't find them. Wow. And I feel like that's a problem with the museums. If there's this one directory that people can go to that's modern and fresh, I think that uh, the, the museums will see more traffic from this. I'm hoping so. I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a great project. And the party coming up on the 9th, it's 6 to 9 p.m. at Threadbare Cider in Mead. That'll be the official launch of the website. And it's $25. You get two drinks from uh, from Threadbare, which is an inc- they have incredible drinks. So you're getting really high-quality drinks. There's going to be some pizza available. There will be live music from Tim Vitolo. There will be two live painters, Nikki Bacon and Mike Zikafus, who are both fantastic. The Carnegie Museum of Natural History will be there with an actual museum that you can Mm -hmm. explore on site. And as if that wasn't enough, it'll be hosted by the esteemed and prestigious myth-breaking Professor Buzzkill. Wait, the Professor Buzzkill? The Professor Buzzkill. He will be on site. He'll be emceeing the event. And if that wasn't enough, the first 60 ticket buyers will take home their own fossil and... If that wasn't enough, if you buy your ticket tonight, by the end of the night, you will be in the running to win a gift basket from Vonka Murals, which is worth $150, and that includes a private tour for eight people into the the murals, which is incredible, among other things. And if you miss tonight's deadline, (laughs) there's another basket that we'll be announcing tomorrow. And we're talking tonight is Tuesday yeah. this week, and uh, tomorrow's Wednesday. So yeah. if you're catching this on the early morning download, uh, you got another chance. Exactly. And yeah. uh, if you miss all of that, if you don't get, if you don't pay by Friday, no extra gifts for you. You just no. get the fossil and <laughs> the, all the other stuff. But I mean, that's a really good deal for $25. No, you cannot beat that. And what's great about this project is it's, it's bringing so many different aspects of Pittsburgh together. You, you've got technology with this website because it's probably well i don't say probably it is the most modern approach to looking at these museums in pittsburgh and it's the freshest approach but you also bring in history and you're bringing in art it's all in in one culture hub and that is pghmuseums.org awesome go check it out uh join them for the party uh sadly i am i am i am priorly indisposed with the work uh, myself, or I'd love to be there. It sounds like it's a good, good time. And damn it, I want a fossil. <laughs> Can I fossil. offer you something else? Mm. Can I offer everybody here, both both you, Sorg, and Chilla, a free membership to pghmuseums.org? What? I would definitely make use of that. All right. You've got it. We'll have uh, memberships for both of you guys. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you very much. So check out pghmuseums.org. A uh, really cool project that's going on here. And uh, definitely join them at the party. Let's keep it local for a minute, guys, shall we? Uh, first of all, I want to shout out to our friend, uh, uh, Chachi. He is uh, he is on his game journey still. 1,001 games to, to play before you die. And he's uh, if you would check out in with him, he's actually doing his wrap-up on Super Nintendo games. He's been digging into a lot of them. Uh, Super Mario RPG. I saw Donkey Kong Country 3. I think I only saw Donkey Kong Country 3. That seems weird to me. Because I, 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 Donkey Kong Country was like one of my favorite games. Uh, it kind of changed changed it for me on the Super Nintendo, right? Uh, so go check that out, uh, thegamejourney.com. Check out what Chachi's up to over there. Also in the local focus, there was some um, Port Authority news that did not include a bus going into the ground. Uh, although there's some great costumes around Halloween, am I right? Uh, so, like whoever was on the south side with the with the uh, uh, sinkhole bus costume that was just walking around and sitting there it was just amazing. So I, you know, I love this. The story is like a weird kind of, um, you know, mixed. Like, what are you going to get excited about? Hey, we're going to get 59 new clean diesel. This is in quotes buses. But hey, they're going to be equipped with outlets for phone charging, guys. So, so here's a question for you. So, the T mm-hmm. runs on electricity. <laughs> You're like, where's it's my practically plug? Practically plugged in. Where's, where's my plug? Where's your plug? I knew this was coming too. You're like, wait, I, I wanted the T. Where's my plug? Where's my Where's my plug parade? Uh, I yeah, 
Yeah. The next the next round of new. I, new... I think it's more like no. No, no, you're no. not getting one. I think I think they can they can spare the electricity, right? At least you have the tea. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah, but, yeah, no, no. Everybody else has buses. They're stuck with buses. We can at least give them chargers. And can I get a bus that comes around more than once an hour? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But at least you can charge your phone while you've been sitting there playing uh, Doctor Mario World. Waiting for it, right? That is actually important because my phone's died since I've been scrolling on it waiting for the bus to come. Yeah, yeah. You keep checking the transit app like, where is the bus? And it's it's hitting your GPS and just draining the battery, right? That's right. So there you go. It all comes together. So some forward thinking, at least a little bit, (laughs) from our friends at the Port Authority when they're not not craning their buses out of holes. Uh, Also, uh, from the Awesome Cast Facebook group, what we were talking about, though, this is... Two items of TV news. First, the bad news. Did we talk about PlayStation View last week? Did that come I out heard since? About this. I don't think that, I don't it think was that afterwards, right? Uh, Sony PlayStation View. Riz, our friend of Riz, plays games on the uh, Twitch. Go follow him, watch him. He plays games, not well, but he plays them. He tries. <laughs> uh, it's in his. That's that's his. That's his. That's basically his tagline. I'm not good at video, video games, but I'm here. Uh, but yeah, the Sony killed the PlayStation View. It's uh, going. It's discontinuing. I believe at the beginning of the year. Uh, so they're rolling out of it. I mean, they, I mean, for, for the company that, um, did not get bit by the entertainment bug that Xbox did, that, that did not do well with them at first. Um, and, and the PlayStation view was a full, you know, probably comparable to, to YouTube TV and things like that. I, I don't know. I thought more people used it because, um, um, podcasts I listened to, they use them and now they're like, yep, now I'm swimming from new options. Thankfully there's plenty out there, but, uh, still that, that's kind of an inconvenient deal there so they're just they're just folding it up and, and that that had like live tv and other yeah yeah i'm surprised apple doesn't didn't just buy snap that. that up yeah yeah well hey apple is uh rolling out their apple tv plus. um plus sorry uh we <laughs> and we had some notes from our friend amanda over at bold pittsburgh uh boldpgh.com uh, and uh, so, so the Apple TV Plus launched yesterday. She says, um, "I think it was officially what a couple of days ago. This was this is on Friday. I think it launched. I have watched ten minutes I, of a show. By the I way, I thought it was Monday. Was it Monday? I thought it was the first. Oh, maybe it was the. I first. could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, Wait a minute. Did I? No, you're so, right. It was the first. I was trying to think when I got the notification mm-hmm. that hey, I was eligible for the first year free. Yeah. And by and the it way, was the first it works on a family plan." rolled my mom up in, into our family plan because she wanted to play some of those arcade games uh she bought a iphone xr like two weeks ago it came right up said hey get your free year and it didn't when i first put it in and i plugged it in and sent her a, a link to her snoopy show because she loves the peanuts so took her to see the cg peanuts movie years ago so uh but anyways she said uh launched yesterday so i decided to watch a few shows so, says amanda I was honestly skeptical uh some of the topics were controversial and not what i want from tv however everything is beautifully made every shot looks like a movie and the film quality is not that of tv i watched all three episodes of the morning show and wanted more and moved on to c that's the jason momoa uh show where I think everybody is blind, post-apocalyptic, and then like there's huh. a sight baby and they're hunted or something. Yep. That's wow. that's the one I want to. Yeah, that, that that's interesting. Uh, for all mankind is the one I'm interested in. and and uh, intends to get the Snoopy as well. So Snoopy is they said I think all the episodes of Snoopy uh, amounts about 36 minutes. So it's, it's it's a quick watch. It's space. It's educational. It's 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 peanuts. If you like peanuts, you're probably gonna like it. Um, so no, it, it, it's there. And it's five dollars, or many of us are going to find a way to watch the first year for free. And, and 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 the general kind of thing is cool. I have it. <laughs> you know, See, my, if go ahead. I was just going to say, my thing is, is is there's only so much you can get, and, right. and it's it's getting challenging because before you had netflix and then you had netflix and hulu and that yeah. was great but now it's like netflix and, and disney hulu plus and disney month, plus and HBO, apple hbo and HBO max HBO next year and peacock coming out well, it's, that might be ad ad support yeah, that yeah might be free. Free. you might not oh, even that pay might be for free it, okay so that, so that would easier. be a little bit better well, so the, the other interesting thing is if you're anywhere near the apple apple eco ecosystem or you're at a minimum interested mm-hmm. in <clears throat> even Apple TV plus mm. you could go out and get a rather cheap Apple TV and have it and have it for free. 
Yeah. Oh, really? It's yeah. for free with an Apple TV. So if you buy if you buy a iPad, iPhone, or Apple TV, and have within the past what two months, and have since September, since September, okay. yeah, yeah, then you're instantly you get a year free. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you start the year when you go into the TV app and hit the and, button and hit the button. Yeah. And I think it's still, I think it's even, I think this is probably going to carry forward into 2020. You think so? I think so. You, you think like when you buy that next iPhone, you're going to get a year. Free. I don't know if it's going to go that long. Okay. But I think we're going to at least see this offer through like June. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if we see it longer. Um, I'm I'm looking forward. I say looking forward, expecting them to do because now okay, I got a year free, but after the year, I got five bucks for this. I got five bucks for Apple Arcade. Where's my ten or fifteen dollars that rolls in like News Plus in my iCloud? You mm-hmm. know, or twenty dollars or something like that. You know, uh, can I drop two hundred dollars a year and just get all that stuff? Right. So I got to punch back. I'm being made fun of in the chat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh. It's Bob Cherry going after me because I was complaining about so many streaming services. He says he's throwing a back in my day quote. I'm not complaining that streaming is successful. I'm glad streaming is successful. My point is, is I can't keep up with all of them. Like it, it's gotten to the point people went, people started pirating because it was impossible to get everything and it was too expensive. Now it's super possible. You're getting nickel and dimed for every other. Yeah, channel. that's what it is. And yeah. That, so and, and that's and that's where uh, with the CBS All Access and, and Star Trek Discovery. I'm not about to drop ten bucks a month because I only want to watch Star Trek. Like literally, I've looked through. Exactly. I don't care about anything There's except for else. new Star Trek on there, and it's not, and it hasn't been compelling enough for me to do that. So what did I do? I got the DVDs from the library of season one of Discovery, and uh, season two we did a, a week free trial, and you know, and then I'll probably just wait till the seasons of Picard and season three of Discovery are done. Because there are weekly releases to keep you paying the ten bucks, yeah, and it's like nothing. I don't give a shit about Big Big Bang Theory. I don't care about that. Exactly. I don't care about Young Sheldon. I don't care about the Good Fight. I don't, you know, or or I don't know Roseanne or whatever the hell else they have on there. Like and that's kind of my point. It's like you can't you can't keep up with all of it, and I think people are no. going to go back to pirating again because it's... no, no. I think I think the version of pirating is. Uh, okay, how can I get another free trial? How can I share a password sure. for my friend? Hey, you pay for Hulu. I'll pay for Netflix. Hey, mom, what do you got on next? Yeah, yeah like, like like this deal making is happening. That's right? what I'm seeing with a that, lot that, of people I know. And a that's lot of that's families. that's kind of the new piracy. Yeah, right. Because it's still harder to go pirate. It's just a little bit of sharing, and it still I, creates customers. Because I got to say, I was a pioneer in cutting the cord. I cut the cord before anyone else. I had an Apple TV. A Roku and a let's let's wait for it. Boxy. Did you ever hear of a box? Boxy? Oh, I, I had a boxy. boxy. Yeah. They actually had a boxy box, and the box was like a weird shape. It was a box, it but was it was cool. like melted into your thing. Well, that was their whole point. They said it was like a conversation piece because it was like on its side. It's on its side. Yes, yes, and the conversation is what the hell is that by your TV? Exactly. And it was it did. It struck up a conversation. But that was kind of like my whole point. It's not so much that I'm against streaming. I'm not. I'm very pro streaming. You say it's too much. I just think there's too many options and it's gotten there's to the point fatigue. where yeah, exactly. And it's like I've I've gone like I'm I'm kind of done. I have Netflix yeah. and Hulu, and that's all I'm getting. So so I'm getting the problem of you know I have my WWE, I have my Netflix that I outright pay for because there's enough on there, right? Yeah. Um, Hulu, I want to I want to drop in when Runaways comes back, and you know because season three because I, I I like that, and they're supposed to get more Marvel stuff. So we mm-hmm. should see what happens that as this Disney merger kind of takes shape, and we see what's done on Disney Plus. But then there's like these incidental things i have like amazon prime i have hbo because of my plan on at&t wireless um i'm going to have hbo max because of my plan on at&t wireless because they're just going to update those apparently uh we also have there's another one that i'm not thinking about with apple tv now is an what's, incidental what's the difference between hbo and hbo max yeah, good question we tried to go over that last week and it's still confusing it's hbo but not it's it's HBO, but not things quite as compelling as Watchmen and Game of Thrones. It's HBO, but with a comedy from Mindy. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, mm. or or an Adventure Time. Movie so it'll be or different. Like it'll that. be a hundred. T- it'll it be is now totally so, different than HBO. Supposedly, yeah. so no, it, it's basically folding in all the rest of Warner Media to the point where, from what I understand, content from Disney Online, or I'm sorry, Disney, not do DC Online, DC Universe will be coming over. Hmm. 
hmm. from what I'm understanding in conversations I'm listening to. So, like, it's going to be all those properties, um, except for Harry Potter, because NBC owns the rights to those apparently right now uh, for, for distribution. Um, that's why they're popping up on USA Network, right? So, so it's going to be, like, how Disney is like, hey, here's everything Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Fox stuff, you know, all in this package. It's going to be, hey, here's everything we own. It, like, I don't know. You'll probably see Looney. Yeah. Actually, I think there is an original Looney Tunes based show coming into it. Like, they're going to hit all of those properties, your DC, uh, Harry Potter, when that frees up, maybe we'll do original content for Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, you know, stuff like that is going to, no, Game of Thrones is going to be HBO. But, you know, there is a site in a, and you can look through it. And, and again, we were kind of poking at that. And we we're like, I don't know. Like, it's kind of got stuff. But if I and it's fifteen dollars, the same price as if you paid for HBO now. Now, okay. So like, it's kind of like if you already are in the HBO bandwagon, why not? But mm-hmm. also, if you're an ATT customer, also a uh, very why not? Because they're practically going to give it to you if yeah. you have a, a higher. That's how I get Hulu. I get yeah. it for free. Yeah, I mean that's but, happening too. Spotify's and Hulu's and you know, like like a lot of people are getting at least that first year, and then they. I mean, I guess we're kind of where the, where the hey, um, seventy dollars for the triple play for the first year, then we jack you up the hundred and fifty bucks, right? Well, you had mentioned uh, the Disney one, the Disney streaming service, and that's kind of a, a prime example of my point. Disney is now by far the majority owner of Hulu. So Disney's got two different streaming services. But they're going to serve two different audiences, from what I understand. I know, but I only want to pay for one of them. But well, you, but you can for $15 and include each, uh, your ESPN as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. Okay. So there you go. Disney is, is proving me wrong. Okay. There, thank you. Uh, Disney has answered your question answered before question. you knew that uh, was the question. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. I'm glad. So I'm okay with that then. I'd rather pay one price for, yeah. for more than yeah. one. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if the Hulu is going to be the commercial free one, though. Like, I think it's going to be I don't have that one. now, anyways. So, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah. If you're cool with that, then... Yeah. So, so right now, what well, you're paying, like, eight bucks for that... Well, I'm getting um, it for free, because it's You're getting it for sprint. free, but... Well, yeah. I'm paying for it through my cell phone. Right, but, but ideally, you get, you know, you, you pay for the thing, you get the ESPN, because I know you're into the sports, and that at least solves some of your sports issues, mm. right? No, uh, not ESPN. Ish. They don't really play anything that I watch. Okay, but, all right, yeah. <laughs> all right. But, I mean, you know, there, there's... Uh, a nice core of people that will probably satisfy. Oh, yeah. A lot of people love ESPN. Chili, so, so. you were going to say? I don't remember now. Oh, I'm that's sorry. okay. That's okay. We got to move on anyways. Hey, guys. I understand this really cool company that has websites about museums uh, called Psychic Media Services <laughs> that we put this part of the show. Um, but if from, we do sporting events. We do music videos. Uh, our friend Nick Ivan, who if you guys uh, check out the Sorgatron Media replay feed, we, we stick a lot of those music videos that we've done with him. We've done like five or six videos with him. Somebody, somebody in the wrestling world was like, hey, do you do music videos? And I sent a playlist from Nick, and they're like, you got to be shitting me. I'm like, yeah, no, we did this. I, I don't know. I, I will see him in person because I don't think he believed me. So I'm like, no, this is the kind of stuff we do. Uh, from that, corporate clients, uh, we can be the sidekick to your superhero project. What next big thing can we help you with? Maybe... You know, well, not a website about museums. We already have that covered with Brian. Uh, so, but whatever that next big idea is, we can do that. Podcasting, video production, social media, websites. Check out uh, a little bit of what we do over at SidekickMediaServices.com. All right, let's hit up. What, what do we want to... Hey, HBO Max, speaking of which, it is it is a story that I put in here. Uh, so, so um, did I share this one? I guess I did share this one. My name's all over this one. Uh, so HBO Max will launch in May 2020. I guess they had the big announcement like probably last Wednesday. That's probably I'm kind of meshing in my head, right? Uh, it will have curated by humans uh, uh, content on there, which is, uh, according to this, a dig at uh, Netflix a- algorithms. What did I have to say about this? Uh, don't see much to get excited about to drop $15 for, but of course, you're probably going to get it some other way and i think and not only at&t wireless i believe they are also working on deals with um cable providers and other things like much like your spotify hbo t-mobile hulu like you got for free kind of thing like you're gonna see those deals yeah so once again many people in may 2020 will get free hbo max wow that is going to happen much like um well much like what's happening with apple right now right uh, let's see. Well, since we're on that topic, let me hit. Listen, listen. From the company that gave you Directv, uh, uh, now turned into AT and T TV. 
which apparently I have my HBO through and I keep forgetting about it. And I'm like, what the heck? Why do I have a login to AT&T TV? I don't remember paying for this. What the hell is happening? Do I need to call somebody? Oh, right. It's AT&T and they really screw with things. Here's this easy to use flow chart. Oh, no, I hit the wrong thing. Hold on a second. Here it is. Easy to use flow chart. <laughs> I don't know. <I laughs> Look at this. In 2020, all. you got HBO Max and AT and T TV Live is your initial bumble bundle. But don't worry, it's going to move to an a, a, an advertising based expansion in 2021, and in the future, we'll future. have live, interactive, and special events. The future. Future. Then the future. The year 2000. I still don't understand. So. They have friends. That's all you need to know. That's, Netflix will have it. lost them? Yeah, they lost mm. them. That's, but they got Seinfeld, which <clears> means Hulu doesn't have Seinfeld. So what... How is it... So what I get on HBO Go today will not be on HBO Max. Well, I'll no, it, HBO no Max it'll and, also include HBO Go. It is HBO, but more stuff that you probably don't care about. <laughs> is, is, is the more I look at this. Hold on, there's a website so right here. Right now, Hulu's the money for me because it just has all the old shows. It, yeah, in whatever, like, Netflix is, like, I'm watching The Good Place on Netflix. I'm watching, I, the, I got, Missy, how excited did I get? Overexcited. Well, you were here when I, I saw there were new She-Ra episodes. Yeah. Because I, I grew up on He-Man, so so I will I will take the She-Ra until uh, 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 He-Man, Kevin Smith's He-Man <laughs> reboot happens uh, next year or whatever it is. Uh, let's see, I, I so... If you go to the website, I don't know if it's clearer, but at least you, like like nothing is like, hey, Steven Spielberg is going to come in and do amazing stories. Hey, Steve Carell is doing this morning show like like, like uh, at and or I'm sorry, Apple. God, they're all blending together. I now, know. Like that's, Apple that's my does. point. Or, hey, there's going to be a new Game of Thrones people doing a show on HBO, right? There's like uh, this person's doing a show and and we'd like you to pay more for it. I don't know. Uh, so this is a site. If you go to HBO Max dot com, I will just. Go to the source. It's it, it, you go in and you look at that lineup of properties. Hey, you'll have content from. We were just talking about this earlier. CN, CNN, Cartoon Network, TBS, Adult Swim, DC. Um, some things they're calling Max Originals. Um, which um, is Cinemax included in this? Hey, True TV and TNT. There you go. Uh, but it, it, it's weird because you start going through and they're like, oh, hey, here's all. So here's all the HBO stuff. Then I'm going to get my Rick and Morty and friends and Doctor Who. Uh, they are going to have the recent Doctor Who's are going to be on here. I think that just came from somewhere else. Your Top Gears, um, like BBC content. Yep. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? Anybody? Yeah, Anybody? Good stuff. <laughs> I like the Fresh Prince. Does it hold up? Does it hold up? I don't... Yeah, sure. But, you know, you're going to get your Lord of the Rings Matrix, like like the, the Warner Brothers catalog on there. Sesame Street. They're actually... First run Sesame Street's moving to HBO Max. Uh, more Looney Tunes Studio stuff. Ghibli, I see. Studio Ghibli stuff. Uh, Adventure Time. There's going to be four new movies, kind of like when they rebooted uh, Futurama at first. So, and uh, Gossip Girl is coming over. Sure. There you go. Sure. So, I mean, that's it's not quite as compelling, I feel. I mean, as Disney to as many people but it could just be the circles i am i'm in also like before wrestling came back to tnt about a month ago i couldn't tell you one program on tnt in the last 20 years yeah i really couldn't i have no idea I, do they have well i don't know because i haven't had cable in, in at yeah least i haven't had years. cable in, in 10 years and even before that once wrestling went off that channel there was nothing for me to watch the only time i watch it is uh during the stanley cup playoffs when i used to have cable because yeah, they, and they, they have nba on there too don't they uh, they probably do they usually don't have nhl except for during the playoffs because they're just trying to like throw it on every you know rinky dink channel that they owned uh, yeah yeah get them all on there yeah, so uh, it's going to be a conundrum, but you're probably going to have access to it anyways, I guess. So uh, looking forward to one more thing to log into. <laughs> Chilla, you threw me for a loop when you started talking about a G4, and you threw me back to 2003 when I was watching documentaries about Sonic the Hedgehog. So if you want to see a new documentary about I an do. old show, yay! Um, I highly, highly recommend going to follow at the Chris Gore on the twitters um he is if you remember he was actually on the show he ran 
the DVD release coverage on DVD Tuesday. Um, <laughs> that shows you what year that, how long ago was this? Yep, we they, had a DVD Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. And it was like two. So attack of the show debuted in March, 2005 and was Oof. on the air until 2013. Oh man. Olivia Munn before she was a mutant. <laughs> um, I mean, she, when she was an X-Men guys, just to clarify, yes. <laughs> I don't, it's not, there's no other <laughs> subtext there. Um, I mean, I watched this. This was a. This is what actually kind of got me into the concepts of podcasting and like mm-hmm. a tech news show. Mm-hmm. Um, some people left this and went on to do. Um, and this was the screensavers when they were when Tech TV was bought turned yep. into Attack of the Show and they ran out the Leo Laports and everybody and hired these young <clears> fresh <throat> faces like Kevin. Per- oh, Kevin Pereira who came from G Four uh and uh and olivia munn and they started doing skits and weird stuff um but yeah but so i guess at different cons people have been asking what actually happened Mm -hmm. to attack of the show and what happened to g4 tv Mm -hmm. um i've heard many podcasts about this as well so they're they're creating (laughs) you know how many books there are i did not about tech tv like people that worked either tech tv or g4 and that that like they're it's got to be at least three books, may, probably more of people that worked in production, people that were hosts, because uh, most of them have been interviewed on, t- on uh, This Week in Tech by now, uh, and are friends of theirs, and so they've all kind of went over. But um, yeah, that, that, that's a like this is a big thing. So they're, they're creating, it's called Attack of the Dock, and it's mm. going to be a documentary and podcast and movie hmm. that is going to be interviews with former writers producers executives the people that work behind the scenes um and they're going to actually share the uncut audio from those interviews um via the podcast you can donate as a little as a dollar um to them and they you will get a digital thank you and the first episode of the Attack of the Dock podcast. Nice. I think, um, I think you get thanked on the first episode, if I read that right. Oh, I didn't read oh, it wow. that way. Mm. A digital thank you along with access to the first That's, episode. It's exclusive access to the dog because yep. the other ones you get like the entire series of the of the podcast. And if you if you get to like the the hundred dollar level, you get a shout out yeah. on the podcast. If you oh, get to wow. 125, there's going to be a release party. Mm. Um yeah, they're it's pretty crazy. If they can get to seventy five thousand in backing, there'll be a San Diego Comic Con screening. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, as a as a former big fan of Attack of the Show, <clears throat> I would I, I'm I'm backing this personally. <laughs> Not all one hundred and fifty. Now, if you were gonna it, if you're but, gonna give me a a screensavers documentary, then I'm in. You should ask Leo. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he has no interest. Well, he's already tried to acquire some of the old stuff, and it was been he has been refused by NBC Universal, who just has it locked away in the vault. But that's okay because a lot of people have their old VHS copies up on YouTube, <laughs> and they haven't been taken down. So, and I think there might have been some some because he was like uh, he said he reached out and 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 he was like, well, can we get like the old episodes, and then we can just like run them like old classic episodes on the feed. Right, kind of like what mm-hmm. we do with indie wrestling here. Like we'll play like old shows on our Twitch feed, right? Um, or that was that was the news segment of Attack of the Show was the feed. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I think it was its own show for a bit, wasn't it? Was it? I feel like it was. Okay. Well, they like spun off and they did like a full news program or something. Hmm. Maybe I don't know. They, there were so many iterations over the years. What do you think killed G Four? Do you think it was the internet? Because I thought it was uh, got bought. It, it got did. bought, and no, then no, they no. didn't do. It, it was, was going to be Esquire was, TV. No, no, no. It was already oh. well, well. It was already owned by uh, NBC Universal, I believe. Um, and then they bought Tech TV, buried the tech part of Tech TV, basically bought subscribers because these were yeah. not in every home. Like we did not have G Four on my. Direct TV back home, but when I moved here and got Comcast, I was like, "Oh wow, we have G4 because it's an NBC Universal property, of course." Yeah. And then they bought Tech TV to get into because I had Tech TV on the satellite, right? And now that expanded that out, but then they kind of muddled the brand of both. I feel, and then I, you know, while you had Attack of the Show fans, I feel like the people that liked G4 and liked the tech kind of were like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. So. 
But I just wonder if those people would even go to cable nowadays. They're probably going to go online. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's online. It's you know, th- I mean, as a concept, it's a precursor to your this week in tax. The so revision three was yeah. born out of this. Um, uh, CNET's. I mean, well, CNET was a precursor to this, actually. Or you could actually join in on stick cam. Stick cam. So if you didn't, oh, yeah. if you didn't get the their, netcam network on the screensavers. Yeah, if you didn't get their channel, you could join them on stick cam. Yep. Okay. And watch. Imagine online. and, and oh, even cool. and even before that, uh, like imagine like 2004. Hey, I'm going to ask you a tech question about Pentium CPUs on my 2004 webcam at 320 by 240. Good luck live on television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's 2019, we have problems here in the studio. Hell, CNN still can't get Skype right sometimes, right? Also, they're just using Skype. That still blows my mind too yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and not very well. Yeah, it was WWE, WWE Skyped in Hulk Hogan from his beach shop in Clearwater, Florida a couple of weeks ago. And I was just like, really, guys? This is what we're doing. It wasn't even like aimed right at him. Oh, I know. You were... see that all the time. It drives me nuts. Yeah. It's like you, you these mega companies will just let people like video mm-hmm. call in with a cheap webcam and i'm thinking you've got so, all of this money it, just send someone out yeah it's like yeah you got that and, and it's like you know when i have something here in the studio when we do something like like say the pittsburgh current and we can't get somebody's thing working i was like well if cnn can't get it right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know i'm you know you're worried about what they have on that end right and I don't think Hulk Hogan's an often uh, webcam user, at least not in the sense that what he would use on TV. Yeah. But anyways, um, moving on, because uh, <laughs> we do have a few more stories. Oh, what time is it? Where are we at with this? It's it's past it's past chill's bedtime. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we've hit up a lot of this. Actually, we've gone deep. We've done the deep dives. We're all over the place. Uh, and I'm still we're because we're just still riled up over that Star Trek conversation. I know Patreon. that was heated. So. Frank, Frank Crawford. Plug things. This Saturday, you you can't miss it. Twenty five dollars pre sale now. Now do it now, today. Now, Vote PGH now. Museums. Uh, PGHmuseums dot org. Uh, it'll be it'll be a great party. Free music or not free, but live music included in your ticket price. Live artists. A museum that you can actually tour and explore. And uh, Professor Buzzkill will be there as well. So if you're a fan of his, you definitely don't want to miss the opportunity right. to meet the the man himself in person. Absolutely, the man, the myth, the unbusted myth. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. You'll be taking names right and from the right also, with the microphone right there uh, in front of you. Chilla, Chilla's getting a lot of conversation here in the chat room. Actually, yeah, oh, so I'm not first in the of chat room all, first of all, partner saying this was after the screensaver ZDTV, Leo and Kate for forever. For life, huh. for for life. Hey, that's why I still wa- li- listen to t- uh, this week in tech. It's the it's the uh, the the move. The, you know, it's the next phase. Carmen says Chilla likes to say Esquire. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, and and no, oh, Chilla Chilla has a bedtime. He has to charge. Chilla, where are you charging on the internet these days? I am charging over at uh, Chilla on the Twitter. John Chilla on the Facebook. It's Chilla Photo on the Instagram, and I think that's pretty much everywhere where you need to find me. There you go. There you go. Well, uh, I can't wait for him to. I don't know. I guess. I guess some museums allow photography, right? Yeah, it, I, a lot of them. I'm do, not mistaken actually. there. A lot of them do. I just remember the Met being really uh, I'm not happy with that. Which one? Uh, the Met. Met. Where's that at? The New York. The New York. City oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. No, the Met. The Met. Yes. <laughs> the Met. <laughs> so i'm sure there's many mets but anyways uh so thank you everybody thank you producer missy for not yelling at me too much during the show and uh thank you everybody in the chat room my guys were hopping here tonight give a shout out to john carmen that joined us on the show last year it's steve from over at bold pittsburgh sports they should have a new episode coming up here later this week what's up bobby cherry we gotta get you back in the studio again uh and our friends from all across the country tuning in brandon the kansas city and so much more we'll be back on the streams over at wrestling mayhem show i don't know what's gonna happen there i think Riz plays games got confirmed with it during the show so uh looking forward to that and uh, uh so much happening all around uh thank you guys you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.